Are you happy? <laughs> um... Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. And for those who are new, I am Matthias Fagmi, a second year PhD student at the University of Oxford. And in this video, we'll be going through a couple questions set out by my non-PhD friends as I like to call them, which is my friends who are studying for a PhD. So let's get right into the video. Question one, if you did not apply for a PhD post-graduation, what would you do? I probably would have applied for medicine, post-grad medicine or undergrad medicine. I am 99% sure I would have applied for medicine if I was not going to do a PhD. Have you started writing your thesis? No. <laughs> I just started my second year. I mean, I know I've heard it separately that it's never too early to start writing your PhD thesis, but I definitely haven't. So maybe I'm slacking, but no, I haven't. What do you do when experiments stop working? Uh, I think it depends on the nature of the experiment, to be honest. But generally, I would reach out to the postdocs in the lab, or my lab supervisor, or bring it up in the lab meeting and explain everything I'm doing, and try to get some advice as to what they think. I generally tend to keep knocking on the door for experiments if they don't work. Keep trying and trying to see um, if I can change things here and there to get things to work. And if things still don't work, I would take a step back. I probably wouldn't try the technique for a while and try to have a bigger picture of what's going on. Yeah. So it's either I reach out to postdocs as my supervisor or I take a step back and try to see the bigger picture. But generally, I don't just quit. At what point did you realize you needed to go for a PhD post-graduation? I think in my first year of undergrad, we had this lab and my experiments were not working for about three, four hours. And I did quite enjoy it. I, I wasn't happy with the fact that I wasn't working, but I really wanted to understand why exactly it wasn't working. And I was not stressed out despite the lab being one of the graded labs. I mean, the grade from the lab counted overall, but I wasn't stressed and I really wanted to understand why I wasn't working. Motivating message to your younger self. I'm really terrible at questions like this because I always think I wouldn't change anything from my past because every single moment led to this one. So, um, but motivating message to my younger self, just keep going. If you already hurt, just get a reward from it. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing with eyes. Can you ever say no to your supervisor? Of course I can, I have a life. I can't say no to my supervisor, and I have said no to my supervisor. I think it's just more about the way I say no. I tend to approach things this way. If it's something I know I'm not gonna be comfortable with, I'd say, oh, let me go have a think about it. And then I come back some other day and just say, oh, I've had to think about this, and I'm not sure I really want to do it this way. Are you happy? <laughs> um, yes, I am happy. I am indeed very, very happy. I am happy, yeah. <laughs> Why did it take me so long to answer? I am definitely really happy. Have you ever felt imposter syndrome as a researcher? Yes, I have felt imposter syndrome. I think more during my master's than during my PhD though. The way research is, it's quite a different terrain from undergrad. It's a different atmosphere as a whole. With undergrad, you're generally with your peers, very similar like-minded people. And then when we research you, kind of go from being that undergrad who'd spend time in the library and read and understand and do well in examinations to just being in the laboratory with people who have dif with different range of experiences, let me put it that way. So you have people who, just like you, you have people who've been doing the same thing for about 50 years. And so sometimes it's just, okay, maybe not 50, that's a bit of an exaggeration. Let's say like 40. <laughs> but sometimes it could just get a bit overwhelming and you could just feel like you're in the wrong space or you you just don't know what you're doing. Especially when you're just trying a project, which I think really affected me during my masters. I'd come from undergrad where I had all the topics I had to learn and I spent time in the library understanding it, reviewing my lectures and things like that. And I come to a totally different environment and I was trying to understand the project and get my head around things. And yeah, at certain points, I just kind of felt like maybe I did not deserve to be on the course or maybe I just didn't deserve to even do this whole research thing. So yeah, I have definitely faced imposter syndrome before. And how did I combat it? I don't know. Maybe we'll would leave that for another video. Worst lab experience. Only one thing comes to mind and it's just, it would have to be with my experiments going terribly wrong. 
So during the pandemic, or rather in the heat of the pandemic, we had shifts in the lab, morning and afternoon shift. And then I was unfortunately in the afternoon shift because I'm a morning person. So telling me to start my day in the afternoon was just, was just unbearable. Anyway, I had an experiment that overran and I was in the lab past midnight, I think. Yeah, well past midnight. And so I got on a call with one of my friends, I was on FaceTime and we're just, you know, talking and having a chat. And I took my sample and put it in the wrong chemical, basically. And I just ruined about five hours of work. So I could have just been in bed. And instead I was doing my experiments past midnight and I wasted my time. Yeah, that's definitely my worst lab experience so far, I think. How would you know when you've come to study a PhD? Uh, when I successfully hand in my thesis and defend my thesis, I believe. What is one thing you wish you knew before you started your PhD? That time goes by really quickly. <laughs> I think, yeah, it would definitely be that. That time goes by so quickly. It's Monday, then it's Friday, then it's one week and one month and two months and you're still trying to get this experiment to work. <laughs> so yeah, time flies really quickly. How do you juggle PhD with life and your other hobbies? I don't. I just find things I'm happy to do and I find time and find a way to do it. And I try to burn out things I call dead time. So when something else is going on, I just try to do something in the background. For example, my cakes are cooling and that's why I'm filming this video. I was baking earlier and yeah, I'm filming this video and it is 3 a.m. in the morning, or well, 2.59 a.m. in the morning. Yep, it's 2.59 and I got done baking about 30 minutes ago and I thought, wow, the cakes are cooling. I filmed this video and then play some FIFA and then head to bed. So I can't really give up great advice on that because I don't, I just, I just do stuff and keep going. <laughs> what was your reaction when you realized you got a PhD offer from Oxford? I think I just lay down on the floor for about 10 minutes i was in my room i remember uh i just laid on the floor for about 10 minutes and just did not see anything <laughs> it was such a struggle i mean the whole phd application process and trying to land the phd was not uh was i uh, describe it as an uphill battle it was like fighting uphill it was it was a very difficult one so when it finally happened i just could not see anything i just lay down and yeah i was on the floor for about 10 minutes and then i got up and i think i called my parents how would you address being offended by a lab member? I will bring it up and just talk to them, just let them know how I feel as quickly as I possibly can as well. I, I'm a big fan of addressing things when they come up and as soon as I can, I hate grudges or holding things against people. Also, I have great lab members, so I don't think it'd be a problem if one of them offended me. It'd be really easy to just bring it up and let them know that I was not happy with it. Can you earn money as a PhD student? Yes. If you're in a stipend, you're already getting paid to study for a PhD. But aside from that, you could get a part-time job or one of your hobbies can pay you, I guess. But yeah, absolutely can. Do you ever have the fear of unemployment? <laughs> yes, <laughs> of course. Um, yeah, I mean, from time to time it comes up, right? Like what happens after my PhD? What happens if I don't get a postdoc? What happens if I don't get into the industry? What happens if I just get a PhD and it's like, yeah, that's it. Um, but at the same time, I'm quite process oriented as opposed to being results driven. So I really like focusing on just the process, like let's focus on what I have to do now, which is run my experiments or write this paper or understand this mechanism um, and the result will sort itself out. So yes, sometimes I do, but I do not let myself get carried away with the fear of unemployment. I, will, I should get a job, I hope. Why did you start YouTube? Ha. Huh. <laughs> YouTube is very far out of my comfort zone. Like, very, 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 very far out of my comfort zone. I learned how to edit videos earlier in the year and I was thinking of developing a website or should I say creating my own website where I could just dump anything I wanted on there. The pictures I take or just my, from my drum, things I've learned from my drumming lessons and things like that. And over time, I kept refining the ideas for my websites and I thought, while I'm working on my website, I might as well start YouTube. The great things in life are out of your comfort zone. So I decided to push myself and say, you know what, let's 
be out of our comfort zone as much as we can and put myself out there really and just see what comes with it so yeah that's why i said youtube we have now gotten to the end of the video that was pretty interesting i hope to do a part two sometime if you have any sub suggestions comments please feel free to drop them down below or reach out to me on my socials thank you very much for watching i'll see you next video